Hey guys, uh, Bob here. What you're about to see is a video of a rare AMC Marlin that used to belong to Field Agent 880. Uh, now you, you're going to watch as we, as I walk up on the car, uh, unrehearsed. The owner of the car was was walking up with me, and I I got out my camera and my phone and started filming immediately. And uh, so it's an unrehearsed video in this car, uh, Field Agent 880 owned this car back in the 90s. It's a rare three, I'm sorry, it's a, it's a 327 four-speed car. And AMC didn't keep the best records on these, but we believe only about 200, maybe 250 were made with a 327 four-speed. Now, he reluctantly sold the car in the late 90s to Robbie Collier of Collier Motors, the guy with the AMC dealership in North Carolina that was featured on the uh, show American Pickers. So Robbie bought the car, and then he resold it to a customer, and, and Field Agent 880 has been looking for the car for years, and to make a long story short, he got a phone call one night a couple weeks ago. The car found him, and it was about an hour away from him, about an hour away from me. He was tied up. I happened to be in that part of town one day in the coming days, and I said, give me the guy's information, and I will call him and set up a time, so I did, and I went by and looked at the car, and the guy gave me permission to video, so that's what you're going to see as I walk up on the car roll, and uh, we are in negotiations to purchase the car also, hoping to get it back, so I hope you guys enjoy this video of this super rare, only a couple hundred built, 327 four-speed AMC Marlin used to belong to Eldon. Yep. And he works for my channel. Yeah, that's what he told me. And he's heartbroken. <laughs> I told him that's so too bad. It's just the shell. Yeah. And the guy never brought me the rest of the parts to do it. Last time I talked to him was 2012. And that was for about 10 minutes. Really? Wow. And before that, it was the Christmas Eve of 09. And I had to try to get a hold of him for four months asking him where's the rest of the parts. Right. So finally, I'm like, all right, I had enough. Time to go. <laughs> <laughs> so I understand he he, uh, he took the car to a shop and they and they threw some of the parts away. Well, no. What happened was the guy had it in a shop in Raleigh, and one of the bosses, owners supposedly, took off with the cash and left the customers with the car sitting there. Right. Okay. Never come back. And so hmm. this guy went and got his car out of there, and apparently he didn't take all his parts with him. Oh, okay. So, he, so he's the one that left the parts yeah, there. He left. Oh, that was kind of unsmart. We did find a guy in Tennessee that's chomping at the bit once a bag because he's got one that he turned into a gasser, but it got hit from behind. Oh, really? Okay. And he needs sheet metal parts from the rear and the lid and stuff like that. So. Okay. All righty, folks. I just, just want to give you a quick walk around on the way we found it. This is the uh, 66 Marlin with that rare, rare four-speed car that Field Agent 880 used to own. And the gentleman here, his name is Ron. And uh, do you want to be on camera, Ron? Nah. Okay. Let <laughs> me you shake your hand, buddy. Thank you for letting me come out and nah, look at no the car. Problem. Ron's a very nice gentleman. Okay, we're, if, you, if it's okay, I'm going to take the car cover off, and I'm going to do my little walk around and everything. And I brought me a pipe over there in case I encounter a copperhead. I hope I don't. But if I do, <laughs> well, I'm going to turn you loose here just for a second, folks, while we get this. Uh, and again, this is raw footage. We just walked up on this car. So let me turn you loose while we get this car cover off. Okay, folks, Bob here. Bob's classic cars and parts. Okay, this car here, as you saw from that first little bit of the clip, like so many of our cars, we walk up on these projects raw. They're not rehearsed and all that stuff. So I walked up on it, the owner gave me permission we're behind his house here and uh i just walked around he told me when i pulled in the driveway he said sometimes there's some poisonous snakes back here so I got my little pipe there in case i would encounter such a critter hope not but um anyway uh, i had just got the phone out he came walking around his name's ron he runs a a, a ceramic coating business for, for pistols and handguns that kind of thing i'll try to link his uh, his business in here seems like a very nice gentleman but anyway the story is this car here belonged to Field Agent 880 back in, I think, 92. And he took it to a shop to have it uh, have floor pans put in it. 
and they took the seats out of the car and put them in the back of an old Pontiac station wagon, I believe he said. It was sitting around behind the shop or something. And in the process of putting the floor pans in, they were they were cleaning up, and I guess they decided to have the Pontiac hauled to the scrapper and forgot to take the stuff in the Pontiac out. And so the car got hauled to the scrapper and was crushed, so he lost the original bucket seats in the car. And I guess that kind of left him a little bit disgruntled when he picked it up from the shop. They had put a set of van bucket seats in it. So he sells the car to uh, Robbie Collier. If you guys know who Robbie Collier is, he's the AMC guy from Pikeville. Uh, American the Pickers did the uh, that show, the last AMC dealer. Okay, that, that place is not too far from here. And I've got a couple of videos out of Robbie. I got about 10 videos out of Robbie's uh, collection. And uh, speak to Robbie fairly often, so uh, he's a nice guy. So Robbie ended up with a car, and then Robbie sold it to the gentleman that was last known to own the car. Okay, the gen that gentleman apparently was an elder guy. Elderly guy he was in his 60s. He brings it to this fellow's house here, Ron. This guy here. At that time, Ron was doing some restoration stuff, and dropped it off to have some work done on it and it was had been taken apart and we don't know who took it apart most likely that gentleman that owned the car and he had already pulled the motor and transmission out apparently before he brought it to ron's shop he had taken it to another shop and left the deposit and left all the parts and when i say all the parts you know he had left everything all the trim uh, all the interior parts and the guy that owned that shop one of his business partners skipped out on him, took the money and ran and left town. So they called all the, they closed the shop down and called all the owners of the cars and told them to come pick their cars up and that they were closing up and yada, yada, yada. I'm not really sure what all happened there, but that's the story I'm getting. So he goes and picks the car up and for whatever reason, he didn't get the parts. He left the parts behind. He brings the car to this gentleman's house here, Ron, to just do the work. He still wanted to get the work done. He told him, he said, I'll have to source the parts. I'll bring them to you as I find them. He never, this was, I think, in 2007. In 2012, Ron, he finally called Ron and said uh, he's still looking parts. I think they talked for about 20 minutes on the phone. So uh, five years ago, gone by, and the guy never produced any parts. He did, he did bring a deposit. So Ron put the car in storage for him. In the meantime, Ron went to that shop that originally had the car to get the parts, is my understanding and they had uh they had tossed the parts in the dumpster because nobody ever came back to get them so that's how the car ended up the way it is it was brought here as a basket case just basically a a roller a, a, you know uh disassembled shell and uh, the guy never could come up with the parts for whatever reason and uh even though he bought the car from an amc dealer who would have probably have had helped him. So I'm not sure without talking to that gentleman, I'm not sure what happened. Now we can't find that guy. We've looked for him. Well, they have, I have it, but they've looked for him. They can't find him. And they figure he's probably in his eighties by now. He could have passed on. But anyway, so Ron is getting a title so he can legally sell the car. North Carolina is tough when it comes to titles. So Ron's getting a, he's, a, he's applied for a title on mechanics lien, I believe is what he's doing. So, um, in the process of doing that, Eldon, my buddy, Field Agent 880, who works for my channel, his name came up as a prior owner. And so Ron reached out to him to see if he knew of any where this guy could be. And so that's how we did, rediscovered the car. So here I am today. We just heard about this on this weekend. It's Tuesday. I got over here as quick as I could. It's about 40 miles from my house. I was in this part of the, wood, the area. I, had, I bought a truck here recently from out this way so i ended up out here and i asked if i could come out and do the video so this is where i'm at so we're going to do the video so i gave just a little backfield a little backstory on how how this cool car came to this state now why am i continuing to call this a cool car okay this is a 1966 amc marlin they didn't make very many of these i'll, I'll try to look up some production numbers and post them but this is a 327. We believe it to be a high output 327. And it came from factory with a four speed. We believe, AMC didn't do the best in the world of keeping records, but we believe, you see the four speed pedals right there. Okay, 
Okay, we believe about 50 of these were made. So, uh, very rare car, high performance, 427, I mean 327. And uh, what a shame. It does look like it's got good floor pans in it. As we go around and look, you can see it is missing everything. And I mean every damn thing. It does have this one piece of chrome here. It's got a pair of fenders from a different car on it. The hood has a little bit of rot here. That can be fixed. Uh, the cow has rot there. He's got, a, he's got another cow to come with the car. And you look right here, you can see it's a uh, pretty bad shape. And there's some rot back here in this corner until you take that fender off, you won't know how far that bad that is. And also back in this corner here, it looks like on the inner fender well. So it ain't terrible, but it ain't great by any stretch of the imagination. But what's terrible about the car is the fact that it's missing the original drivetrain. So it's gonna be really tough to ID this car. Now here's the, I wanna show you guys the VIN. You guys can crunch that all you want. If we're wrong about the 50 with the five speed, I mean the four speed transmission, let us know, but that's that's my understanding. If, it's, if we are wrong, we're not wrong by much because they didn't make very many period of these cars. Okay, I'm gonna give you a little walk around. We've got a big dent here in the fender. Nothing, nothing I've seen yet is not too terrible bad. I mean, rockers and these rockers, you know. Let me get my little pad here. I'm gonna get down on my knees and I'm not a spring chicken either. Sometimes when I get down, I can't get up. Let's see what we can come up with up in here. We'll look this car over really good. Oh yeah, we got a lot of rot in this inner fender here. Oh my goodness, look at that. Look at all this, guys. Can you see all that? She's pretty bad. That's bad. That's a splash shield, I'm thinking. Or is it? All the way down to the bottom. That may be a splash shield, I'm not sure. I know some of the Mopars, they use a splash shield there. Oh, we get on into the, uh, the fender, looks okay, I think. The locker, other than the little holes on the outside, it don't look that bad. You know, a lot of dents in the door. The bottoms of the door, I can't open them when there's no hinges. And I don't want to undo his strap. So, uh, frame rails appear to be okay. You guys see something, let me know. I'm a little timid with the poison the snake thing about <laughs> getting down in here. Ah, oh, man, that lower quarter shot, obviously. Woo. What is that hitting me there? Okay. Yeah, let's move on back a little further here. Things I do to save these old cars. Now, he said the rear end was just strapped in, and you can see the strap. He said it flops around really bad. It looks like the trunk pan looks okay, and the rear frame rails look okay. Like I said, it's nothing really, really terrible, but when you add it all together, it's terrible. Uh, if we hadn't have lost that four speed in the original engine, that's a shame that happened. Trying to find that damn glass too. God almighty. I mean, you would have to find a parts car that's in better shape than this, which wouldn't be a big deal if you had the original drivetrain. But without the original drivetrain, you're probably better off just to not tear another car apart unless there's an old car that's been wrecked really bad or something. Or... So there. Let's see what else we can come up with. Don't have a fuel tank. Now this quarter here, I don't have my magnet with me, but that, if it ain't full of mud, Now this would also, kind of like that blue, petty blue little red express truck we did a while back. Same kind of thing. It's missing the original drivetrain. It's missing a lot of parts. Uh, the cab is going to have to be replaced. Good car, good truck to put a 5.7 Hemi in or something like that. This car here, since it's missing the original drivetrain, if you wanted to do some type of rest of mod, put whatever engine in it you wanted, 
I really couldn't blame you. Now he thinks he's got it sold to a gentleman in Tennessee if my buddy doesn't buy it. So my buddy's gonna have to act quick. Yeah, again, this rocker looks okay. I don't know what kind of mud's in it. You know, a little patch panel on the door. The door on the other side, he wanted to replace, but I believe that's repairable. And as you see, the fender there looks okay. The roof looks okay. And the channel with the window looks okay. This would be a buildable car if we had the damn parts. Damn shame. It may still be a buildable car. Yeah, this thing, look at that, holy shit. Pardon me, I'm sorry. <laughs> look at that, now, the firewall is gone. Oh my God. Okay, guys. And it's got a, is that a dual master so I believe it is. It's like it's got a manual power steering box, I mean, a manual power steering box. I was right the first time. I don't know, guys. I mean, you put a small block Chevy in it, a LS or a Hemi or 401, 390. You can have some fun with the car, but you're never going to be able to put it back original. And I believe with some help from Robbie, we could we could find the parts. And it's got some rock right here on the radiator support piece. Oh man, what a shame. Let's take a look at that dash. I know this video is getting long, guys. I'm sorry. Look at that. That dash that cluster looks all complete. Still has the machine turn panel at the bottom where the switches went in. There's your four speed hole, hump, and hole. Okay, guys. Well, you've pretty much seen it. Again, uh, we're putting it back original unless we can look up and find the original drivetrain. That ain't gonna happen, but putting it back can happen. And just what whatever engine we decide to go with or whoever buys it decides to go with. Now my understanding the guy in Tennessee wants it for the for the rear clip. He, he wrecked the back, somebody ran into the back of him. I think that's what uh Ron was saying. So uh He's gonna he's gonna cut the back clip off of it. So my my buddy, field agent 880, he'll try to put the car back together. So, uh, folks, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, yeah, there's your Z bar right there. Some wiring harness is still in it. Let's see if there's any wiring harness under the dash. Yeah, there's a little bit in there, not a whole lot. Probably not. It's definitely missing some wiring, I believe, inside the dash. It looks to be. Okay, guys. So there you have it. Uh, I'm not sure how we're going to present this video. Uh, this is a car that's special to Field Ages 880. He may, he may want to chime in and create some kind of uh, the stories with Bob thing we do. I'm not sure, but... Uh, there you have it, folks. Hope you enjoyed that. This is what we do, guys, on this channel. We find these old relics, and uh, sometimes there's six on the cars. They're just plain cool. Sometimes there's something special like this, one, one of 50. Uh, who knows? But uh, raw videos. I'm no expert on these cars at all. Uh, and you're just walking up with, with me as we see it. So... I hope you enjoy that type of content. I really do. Because we're true car guys. It's none of this stuff's rehearsed. It's not planned. It's not planted. Anything like that. So, and we find a lot of cool stuff. Our, our fingers reach quite a, quite a ways. Okay, folks. Uh, for the 14th time now, I'm going to try to sign off here. I just, I'm just heartbroken that this car ended up like this. I really am. I can't get it out of my head. Take care. I hope you enjoyed that video. Hit that bell notification. That way you can be notified of any new videos. We put out a lot of videos every week. And uh, i got seven guys that help me on the channel. And uh, we're in three different states. And uh, car guys, we all know each other. And uh, man, I tell you what, 
we do some outstanding stuff with these cars. There's a lot, of, a lot of guys on YouTube that save cars, and we're right there with them. So uh, we're going to try to save this one, I hope. I'm going to try to talk him into it. I've done made my mind up. So, All right, folks, uh, hit that bell notification. Hit that subscribe button. We'll have some more stuff coming soon. And I uh, hope you like this video. This is Bob from Bob's Classic Cars and Parts.